caught her dad. <laughs> wow! <laughs> I had to be up here to find that out. Time is um, flown. The years are the year is, is moving on. We're now at the end of uh, February, and um, February, in many cases, is known as uh, is uh, Black History Month. And so, uh, <clears throat> many of you might have gone to the uh, concert last week where several churches came together from around the city. We practiced for too much, and we had the concert. The concert went very well. 100 voices in that choir. It did a, just a great time, and uh, they celebrated their 20th year of having that concert. So that was great. Um, <clears throat> Pastor Josh asked me to speak. He said he was going to be I thought he would not be here today, but he's here today. He was out all last week. Sorry to disappoint. That's all right. That's all right. He said, would you give the sermon? I said, okay. And this day, we had kind of set aside as Black History Month to talk about black history. So you don't have the title of my sermon, but I'll give you the title of my sermon. How important is Black History Month? How important is Black History Month? Today we have another opportunity to recognize Black History Month. Is it just a trite or hackneyed observance to you? Or is there still life zest, vitality wrapped up in the observance to you? Well, I think we can f uh, find feelings and opinions on both sides of this coin. Is it important? Is it not important? Some people say, you know, hey, this happy thing just goes on and on every year. Well, Black History Month is a time that has uh, been set aside by our nation for its observance. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at its importance. But first, let's go to God in prayer. Mm -hmm. Father, we come before you this day. We thank you for it. It's an opportunity for us to, to build bridges with you and to build relationships with our brothers and sisters. And we just pray that you will yes, be us in this service and that what we learn and what we uh, understand today will be to your honor, to your glory. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Again and again, the question is asked, why is black history important? Mm -hmm. As some of you will remember, about three years ago, I gave a full-blown sermon on why black history and a black presence in the Bible. I related the feelings of many of the, in the black community as to why this observance is important to them. Many in the black community, and some of the reasons were, as blacks, we, would, uh, we should know our history for us as individuals. It takes away every excuse. You realize from that God is a sovereign God <coughs> and that he is no respecter of persons. There is a history we need to draw from. We see and realize that it can be done. Things can be accomplished. And the Bible says, know the truth and the truth shall set you free. I'd like to share with you a video with, um, which touches on this subject matter and why many don't take this particular subject matter seriously. It's a video uh, entitled, Students in Class, Black History Month 2015. And the student that's talking here is a young man by the name of Sam King. Can we show the video?
Where's the picture? <laughs> Actually, a darker man who made that light flick, Lewis Latimer, to be precise. Quite nice when you're talking about Mr. Hamilton and his racing car, but red light stop. We're always taught that Martin Luther King had a dream, man. But those dreams can't be achieved because our brains have been changed, our minds have been slaves, so we won't get our redemption, Morgan, free, man. Will we ever be free, man, and leave this state of imprisonment? and take that walk of free, damn it, green man from a traffic light invented by the same man who made gas masks to protect our organs. Another free man named Garrett Morgan. But I bet you never knew that. We need to open our minds. But how can we be taught to see if the blind lead the blind? The first person to develop significant eye surgery was a black woman named Dr. Patricia E. Barth. Now on that note, there's a question I must ask. If this is a great opportunity to learn and be engaged about our past, why are we not actually being taught about our past? Transatlantic slavery where we're taught black history starts, but is it really? There seems to be a lot you haven't told us. And you shut down and hold back on the board once you stand against the way you're trying to mold us. Consistent enemies of progress. You're surprised because I know things you don't expect me to know yet. And when I tell you you're wrong for telling me about me, you call it a riot or I call it a protest. The broadwater farm rights. The media exacerbate and make it seem like it's a bunch of delinquent youths on the streets. When really the first cause and trigger was death at the hands of the police. We cease to know information and the truth. And that's simply because you withhold information from the youth. Maybe. Maybe one day we'll be satisfied with how our knowledge of history equates. Well, I'm sure like me, you're waiting for the teacher to fill in that space. So do so then. No answer. Well, maybe I can help and just throw out there some names. Mary Seacole, a Crimean war nurse. Mary Prince, a black female author. To be precise, she was the first. Bernie Grant, 
influential local activist and respected MP, Trevor McDonald, one of the first black ITM journalists to hit the TV screen. Jamal Edwards of SPTV. And when Fuse ODG brought the horizontal dance to the UK, and my foot swayed to the left and to the right like the wipers of a car's windscreen, and DJ Abrante brought Afro beats to the streets. See, it's funny when we think of our childhood memories. And mine was actually funny. Lenny Henry. Many others, and the list continues. Marcus Garvey, Haile Selassie, Bob Marley, Ignatius Sancho, Tupac, Fela Kuti, Muhammad Ali, Maya Angelou, R.I.P., Kwame Nkrumah, the first Ghanaian president who retained independence from England. The Windrush ship which brought Caribbeans to Britain. So much to learn in just one month. A tip of the iceberg, a tiny grace. And what was the first black Roman emperor's name? Years passed and we're still caught up in the same civil rights age. Which isn't bad if we learn something new. But we don't. And we're not being taught enough about our culture, so there's no one else to blame but you. And if not you, then who? Questions, questions, questions. If you're not teaching us these things, then I'm inclined to believe it's because you don't. No. No. You're the teacher. Your job is to teach, so you must know. And if you do, that must mean you don't want us to know. But that's low. If the information is accessible for our knowledge of our culture to grow, then why on earth wouldn't you want to let us know? Why do you focus so heavily on the influential but very few men and women who make things happen for us? Why are my people being highlighted for a predominantly negative past? Why do I know the things that you don't and I'm not the teacher, you are? Why do you focus on our negative past but not on our bright future? Why are you not abreast with the great young things that people are doing in this world? Why are young people's trademarks and stereotypes gang culture and young pregnant girls? Why are the young people not being given the time of day? And his name of Septimus Severus, by the way. I'm sure as a student, the code of conduct has been breached. So I'll stop here and let you do your job. So teach. Sam King, the young man in the video, was truly frustrated with dealing with and hearing the same old thing, the same old stories told year after year for Black History Month. <laughs> Nothing's new, he said. He feels uh, he's actually a slave to the educational systems that is either ignored or holding back on knowledge about the true history of his race and his ancestors and how they have con uh, made a contribution to the success <laughs> of humanity. Yeah, excuse me, I had, I had uh, eye surgery and I don't have my proper prescription yet, so I have to struggle with reading. In fact, my final uh, 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 I exam and my classes will come on Tuesday, so I'll be a happy camper. <laughs> Through personal research, Sam uncovered several positive cont contributions about his ancestors, but the educational system and society as a whole have only focused on the past negatives of his people. You know, uh, gang culture, young pregnant women, being lazy, lethargic attitude, and not encouragement for a bright future and his potential. Mm -hmm. Sam wants to be encouraged by his ancestors who have made things <coughs> happen. He's hungry for it. He's thirsty for it. He's dying to know it. It's a pathway that can lead to success. And Sam ends this discussion by sarcastically saying, I'm sure this student's code of conduct has been breached, that is by him speaking out. So I'll stop and let you, teacher, do your job. Now, these are the people uh, in um, Sam's personal research who made an impact um, on his life people who his teacher didn't seem to know about. First it was Ralph Bunch, the first uh, African American to receive a Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize. He was a political scientist uh, to mediate relationships with Israel. He mentioned Heidi Selassie, 
uh, Ethiopia's emperor from 1930 to 1974. 44 years did he reign, or did he rule? Lenny Henry, uh, Lenny Hen Hen uh, Henry, a English stand-up comedian, actor, singer, writer, and television personality, uh, who was known for co-founding charity comic relief. He mentioned Trevor McDonald, a Trinidadian British journalist who was knighted in 1999 for his work in journalism. He mentioned Mary Prince, a British abolitionist and autobiographer born in Bermuda. Now, where was Sam from? What is his nationality? I really don't know. I don't know if he's uh, from Africa. We can't tell. He's got broken English. We don't know if he's from the Caribbean. We don't know if he's British. But the thing that was important to him were this list of people, people who were like him. Those were the people that made the impression on him. They were his role models. So that's what's important, where you are and who you can relate to. Now, I want to uh, give you a few uh, prominent black U.S. people in our history. Are you familiar with these people? Thomas J. Jennings invented, invented a method for dry cleaning known as dry scouring. He became the first African American person who received a patent from the U.S. government in, in 1821. Louis Latimer helped draft Alexander Graham Bell's patent for the telephone and also created the carbon filament inside of Thomas Edison's light bulb.